Hello, this is Mocha Product Manager Martin Brennan, and welcome to this basic tutorial on doing Roto with the Mocha Pro plugin in Adobe Premiere Pro. We're going to be changing this swaying red tie with the moiré pattern, or however you like to say that word, into a darker tie with the moiré removed. So if I just turn off the visibility here, we can see the change that we're going to make here. We're going to smooth this out, but there's a lot of subtle variation in here, so we want to track that through with the Mocha Planner Tracker, and then use the Roto on the tie to isolate the effects. I'm going to be showing you two main points of handling the roto today, how to track for the roto, and two, the benefits of the Mocha plugin mats versus using the exported masks for Premiere. The footage today is brought to you by the delightful people at Pond5. So I've started a new file here and we've got our dapper fellow looking at his phone. So first of all, we're going to search for Mocha in our effects. There we are, here's Mocha Pro. So I'm going to drop that onto my layer, and then we're going to launch the Mocha GUI choosing the large Mocha button at the top of the effect. So let's go inside. So inside Mocha, we're going to come up to our X-Blind tool, and the first thing we're going to do is draw a large shape on the front of the man's chest. So we could just go ahead and draw a shape around the tie to track that area, but there's not actually a lot of useful texture detail here. So we might as well use the whole chest area because it's all on the same plane. So this is the large advantage of using the planar tracker. You can use any part of the plane to help drive motion on other parts of the plane. So I'm just going to go ahead and start tracking this forwards. And we'll speed up the track in a minute so that you don't have to sit through the track. But what this is doing is now tracking all the texture detail within this shape. And then we can link this shape to a separate roto shape for the motion of the tie to refine it down. So I'm going to speed up the track now and we'll come back when it's done. So that's all tracked through the shot now, so now we can go ahead and use this to drive our roto. So first of all, I'm going to name this one Tie Track, so that we know what it is, and I'm going to turn off the cog so it doesn't track again, and I'm going to turn off the visibility of the layer, because we don't need to see it. I'm going to come back to the beginning of the shot, and we're going to zoom in here a little bit, and now we can begin our refined roto shape. So once again, we're going to come up to the X-Blind tool, and we're just going to come in here and start drawing out our shape. We're going to do it all the way around the tie, down the side here, get into those corners around here, do, 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 do. Now I'm going to smooth this out by right clicking my handles to smooth all parts of the x -Blind. But we're going to zoom in a little bit further here so we can start actually adjusting the shape a little bit further. So we're going to bring it up here. We're going to tighten this out again because we want to get that sharp corner where the shirt lapel hits the tie. And the same down the bottom here, we want to drag that out a little bit so it fits into that little corner of his suit there. And we're just going to keep refining this down. So once we have our refined shape, what we can go ahead now and do is come over to a link to track and choose the tie track. So now when I scrub through the shot, you're going to see that tie is moving along with our tracking data. Now you can see obviously there's a little bit of drift and roll as the tie moves around, but now we have the overall motion with the tracking data, we can go ahead and do refined keyframes without having to do sort of a frame after frame adjustment on that manual roto. So we can start adjusting this, we can use either the transform tool by holding down the control or command key to warp using the transform tool, or skew it, or adjust and scale and so on, or we can go in and adjust the individual points. But I'm not going to sit here and make you watch that, so I'm going to speed up the recording so you can see me do this much, much quicker, and we'll come back when it's done. Okay, we're back. So now we've done all of that, you can see what I've done here. I've gone through and added a few keyframes through the shot to match up to the sway of the tie inside that planar tracking data. Now that's matched up quite nicely, and I haven't had to do too much work there because the tracking data has taken the brunt of the work. You'll also notice that the scene is a bit brighter. This is because I've turned on the brightness icon out here, which lets you adjust the level of brightness in the scene, which just makes it a bit easier to see what you're doing when you're doing roto work. So we can turn that off. So now that we have all this, we can go ahead and export our data back to Premiere. But first of all, let's claim our roto layer. I'm going to double click this and do tie 
Roto as my name, and in the track tab we're going to come down to the export shape data button and choose Adobe Premiere Shape Data from the options. And then I'm going to choose the selected layers, in this case the tie Roto, and copy it to the clipboard. We can now go ahead and close and save. So we'll click the X up here and choose save to take us back to the Premiere timeline to start using that Roto data. So now we have our mask data, we've got a few options we can do here. If we're using the Mocha Pro plugin, we can actually just go to the matte options inside the plugin and choose apply matte. And this will actually render our tie directly to the timeline. The advantage of this is that if you need to make any changes to your Roto, you just have to go back inside Mocha, do an adjustment, close it again, and then it will re-render correctly to the timeline. And there's no messing around with exporting masks or removing masks to fix up things. The disadvantage is that it does do an opacity cutout, which means that if you want to do any sort of comping work, you will need to duplicate your layer and then comp it down onto the original plate so that you've got two layers in your timeline instead. But that's a minor problem. The other way is to paste the Premiere mask data we exported to the clipboard. And this is obviously the only method you can apply when you're using the standalone version of Mocha. We have two courses of actions for the Premiere masks. We can either paste them to the opacity footage layer, and this will actually act the same way as the Mocha apply matte function. Or we can paste masks directly to an effect to isolate the effect without needing to cut out and comp down onto the original source footage. The main disadvantage of this method is that if you want to make changes, you will need to remove the mask, go back to Mocha to adjust, and then re-export. So let's show that workflow using masks. So the first thing I'm going to do is apply a Lemetry color preset to my footage to darken down this tie. So we're going to come in here, I'm going to choose, I think it's called Blue Steel here. We'll come in here and we'll throw that on so we'll get this Blue Steel color correction here. So that's given it a nice bluer fade off the red there, and it's darkened it down quite a bit, which is nice. But now I want to go ahead and isolate that effect. So I'm going to go into my Lemetry color option here in the effect panel, and I'm going to right click and choose paste. And this is going to bring my mask into the shot. So we can adjust that color through the color panel here, so I can switch over to my color tab inside Premiere Pro and adjust all my Lemetri preset in here. I actually want to bring the darkness down just a little bit, so let's just open up our curves here in Lemetri and we'll pull that down just a tad, and that's a much nicer color there. So I'm happy with that now, so we'll go back to the effects tab, and now we just need to adjust the key. So you can see here when we pasted the mask, it's offset by a certain amount. This is because Mocha pads the mask data from the start of the clip you've edited in the timeline, just in case you've got multiple shapes starting at different times. Now we may change this in later versions just to paste from the playhead, but it's good to know just in case you need it. So right now though, what we need to do is adjust the keys to match the edit. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and select my mask path, and choose select all on those keys, and then I'm gonna drag them over to frame zero. So I'm gonna move them all the way over across. Let's just zoom in here so we make sure we're actually on frame zero, like so. And now when we scrub through the shot, you can see that the mask is lining up to the tie correctly with that color correction. So the next thing we wanna do is actually fix this weird pattern that's in the tie, that moiré pattern that I was talking about before. So let's just copy this mask data because I've already done the key shift. I don't want to move the key shifts again, so I'm going to copy that mask data, and we'll deselect that. If I scrub through the timeline, you can start to see what I'm talking about, that little moiré pattern that's happening on the tie. So we just want to blur that down a little bit. So to do that, what we're going to do is apply a Gaussian blur to this tie, and then just smooth it out a little bit and isolate it with the Mocha mask again. So let's come into our search in the effects panel again, and I'm going to choose... Gaussian, and we're going to get the standard Premiere Gaussian Blur, and we'll apply that to our layer. So let's come down here, and we can see that same Gaussian Blur effect now. So before we do anything, let's just go ahead and apply that mask data. So I'm going to right-click the Gaussian Blur effect and choose Paste, and that's going to bring in our mask the same way as we had for the Lemetri Color preset. So finally, let's just deselect that mask, and we'll go ahead and adjust 
the blurriness here so we can fix that moire say 11 and now when we go and scrub through the shot we can see that blur and the color correction is happening through the entire shot so let's just hit enter to render that effect into out and there's the final result so this is masking via tracked roto data using Mocha masks in Premiere. You can either mask out the opacity using Premiere masks to opacity, or apply matte in the Mocha plugin, or you can paste the mask directly just to isolate the effects where you need them. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us via the website at borisfx.com.